Hello everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to talk about all things sugar beets. So there are two main ways to get sugar for your sugar factory or for the chocolate factory or the bakery if you're going to produce some cakes. And that is either sugar cane, which we recently did a video on, or sugar beets. So today we're going to cover the second way in order to make use of your sugar factory and we're down here once again on elm creek and unlike the sugar cane video where we used field 34 we're going to use field 33 for our sugar beet video because it's nice square and has a fair bit of turnaround room on either side of the field which is going to be pretty handy because when you start talking about sugar beet equipment well, the scale gets pretty big pretty quick. In fact, we've got some sugar beet equipment here down on field 34 staged, just to give you a little bit of an example. We have a pull behind sugar beet harvester, and this is basically the smallest bit of sugar beet kit that we're gonna be dealing with. Then we have a specialty purposed sugar beet auger wagon. This thing requires something like 400 horsepower to operate. We have one of our self-propelled sugar beet harvesters. We have a massive sugar beet collector that we're gonna demonstrate. Another sugar beet harvester, and of course, a semi in order to transport your harvested beets. So let's go ahead and take a look in the shop at all the various equipment that you're gonna to need to use to plant, harvest, and transport sugar beets. So under vehicles, we have the sugar beet technology, beet technology. We have the Ropa Panther 2. It is a self-propelled beet harvester. We also have, have the Ropa Tiger 6S. It is also a self-propelled beet harvester. And then we have the Grimmy Rexor 6300 Platinum. Once again, it is also a self-propelled sugar beet harvester. And all three of these pieces of equipment are absolutely massive. You'll see that this one, for example, holds 43,000 liters of sugar beets and weighs 34 tons. We have a Ropa Mouse 5. This is what we showed earlier that is gonna be used to collect sugar beets that are piled on the ground. One of the ways that sugar beets are harvested in real life is they are collected out of the field and often piled along the side of the fields. And then something like this will come along and collect those heaps and put them into a trailer via a conveyor belt. So we're gonna demonstrate that usage also in this video. As far as then smaller equipment, we have beat technology under tools. This is where we're gonna find the two Ropa headers, the RR6- or 6X45. This is gonna be used for the Panther. And in theory, the RRXL9X45 is gonna be used for the Tiger. You have to buy the header separate. Then we have the Grimmy FT300. This is a topper. So this would go on the front of a tractor has three meter working width and would be used to take the tops off the sugar beets so that you could then dig them up and harvest them. Then we have the Root Stir 604. This is the pull behind sugar beet harvester. It will only work if the sugar beets are topped first. So the typical configuration would be to have the topper on the front and then the Root Stir on the back to harvest our sugar beets. This will hold 6,000 liters of sugar beets. It won't take long to fill this particular harvester up. Under auger wagons, we have the sugar beet specific beet cart right here. It holds 45,000 liters of beets. And then we also have the Bergman RRW 500 that holds 50,700 liters of sugar beets. And like I said, these things are absolutely massive pieces of machinery. Now, as far as planting sugar beets, we do not have a custom planter 
for sugar beets. Any planter in game will allow you to put sugar beets in the ground from the Falcon 3, 3 meter planter, all the way up to the large Kinsey 4905 Blue Drive, 18.2 meter planter will allow you to plant sugar beets. And in fact, that is what we're going to use in this video is the large Kinsey planter in order to get those beets in the ground. And once the beets are in the ground, you're going to treat them as you would any other plant here in Farming Simulator 22. That would be you're going to want to roll after you plant, and then you're going to want to come by and weed in order to keep the weeds under control or use herbicide. And then we're just going to let them grow and see how long they grow. Now, something else we're going to take a look at is how to make cut sugar beets because the sugar beet factory will also take cut sugar beets. And in order to make cut sugar beets, we need to use the Ruby 2000 front loader bucket. We'll need to fill this with sugar beets and then turn it on and it will output out the bottom cut sugar beets. So we're going to demonstrate that also. So with that, let's also talk about the planting schedule if you have seasonal cycles enabled or seasonal growth enabled. So let's go to settings because for these videos, I have seasonal growth turned off. Now that we have that turned on. We're going to go to our crop calendar and let's take a look down here at sugar beets. Typically, you're going to be planting your sugar beets in March and April, and then you're going to be harvesting your sugar beets in October and November. And that is, again, if you use the seasonal cycles calendar or the seasonal growth calendar. We're going to turn that to off so that we don't have to move into March, which we're already in. Now let's go ahead and get some sugar beets in the ground. Probably don't need to demonstrate this too terrible much. It's just like planting any other crop. We're just using the large Kinsey so that it will be a little bit quicker to get the process done. And just for simplicity's sake, we will hire a helper. Just like this. Now I have already prepared this field by mulching it and cultivating it. It's got two layers of fertilization already down. So we need to come through here now with a roller and roll this and then we'll need to come through here and take a weeder to get the weeds out of the ground and as you can see right now we have a yield bonus of approximately 98 percent so we are now one month post planting remember we have seasonal growth turned off for these videos as you can see our sugar beets have emerged and we have a yield bonus of plus 100%. So we have fully fertilized, fully rolled, weeded, mulched, lime, all of those items on this field at this point. Three months post planting, we now have another growth stage on our sugar beets. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like when we move into our second growth stage. Five months post planting, we now have our third growth stage on our sugar beets. So seven months post planting, we now have sugar beets that are ready to be topped, AKA remove foliage and therefore they are ready to harvest. If we take a look at our growth overlay, you can see that they are now listed as remove foliage, which means that they are done growing and are ready to 
get up out of the ground. So we're going to take a look at three different ways to harvest our sugar beets. First, we're going to take a look at the pull behind harvester and the three point hitch front topper. Then we're also going to take a look at the self propelled Grimmy harvester and the self propelled Ropa harvester. The self propels obviously are a significant investment. So for an early sugar beet farmer, the self or the pull behind version may be your best bet. So for the pull behind harvester and front topper, again, we're going to find that under the shop, under tools, then beat technology. We've got the FT 300, 24,500 to top the sugar beets, and then 98,500 for the pull behind harvester. Still a pretty big investment at $120,000. But... You're going to get a fair bit of yield off of this, and if you do make use of the sugar mill, I think you're going to be making your money back pretty short order. Let's go ahead and turn on the topper. Then we will lower and turn on the harvester. You see the way the topper is basically chopping up the plant matter leaving a rather unique texture behind it. So you could come through here and top your beets first. And then if you wanted to... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, everybody. In post-production, I noticed right here what looks like crop destruction going on. In this whole segment... I was talking about how you could top the crop and then you wouldn't have to worry about crop destruction. Well, on this particular tractor, I have just regular tires. And as you can see here, it does look like we are experiencing crop destruction by driving over the topped sugar beets. Now, I'm pretty sure I remember in Farm Sim 19, that is not how it worked. But it appears in Farm Sim 22, that if you're going to use the pull behind harvester and the three point hitch front topper, you will need to use narrow tires to avoid crop destruction. So back to your regularly scheduled program. Something that I have not confirmed with respect to farm sim 22, but in farm sim 19, if you topped your beets, it also kept them from moving to a withered state. So if you do not harvest your sugar beets within a certain period of time, your sugar beets will wither and you'll lose the crop. But if you top the sugar beets, at least in Farm Sim 19, again, I haven't confirmed this works in Farm Sim 22, if you top your sugar beets, they won't wither, and you'll basically be able to come by at, at any point in time later and dig them up out of the ground. So that is basically how you harvest with the pull behind harvester. Just gonna go ahead and turn that off after one pass. We're going to want to pipe out with O. Then raise the conveyor belt and then we will unload. Our sugar beets into our truck.
just like that. Now let's take a look at the Tiger self-propelled harvester. There we go. So we need to unfold the Tiger harvester. We need to make sure we're selected on it. We're gonna hit X to unfold the harvester. There's a fair bit of animations we're gonna go through here. Get the harvester all ready to go. Can hit pipe out if we want. And then we can left click and raise and lower the pipe to basically allow us to fit. And then we can left and right on the mouse button to change the angle of the top of the output pipe. We'll just go ahead and Pull the output pipe back up while we're at it. The header can also be folded. I have it unfolded here because quite frankly, when it's in its folded position, you really can't see the drive, right? So if it's attached to the harvester, you really need to have it unfolded. Now, something I didn't show you earlier is that there is a harvester header that you can use to transport the Ropa harvester headers. Right here we have the RRXL9X45 trailer. This is intended for the nine row, the larger Ropa header trailer, or header. You can transport it on this trailer should you so wish. And I believe that is, that's probably what we have attached here, the nine row header. Now this harvester also has some various driving modes. Right now we are in all wheel steer. So you see that all the wheels turn to allow this to make fairly tight turning radius given the size of the machine. We also have control Y, regular turn steering. So at this point, the front of the harvester articulates and the rear wheels turn. So now we're making an even tighter turning radius. Then we have grab left steering. And you'll see what happens is the rear wheels kind of kick out to the left and it's going to cause the entire thing to drive in a rather interesting fashion. And the purpose behind this is soil compaction. As you can see the tires here, see how the tire marks are being made. We're basically not driving over top of the tire that is directly in front of us for the most part so that we are spreading the weight out of the machine over more of the field. And therefore, in theory, we would have lower soil compaction. Left control Y to then do crab steering right, which would then shift the entire thing over to the right. We're just gonna go back to all wheel steering because for me, that is going to work best. I'm not a big fan of having the front, I kind of call it wiggle worm, when the front kind of turns as opposed to the body. We're going to lower it down, turn it on, and we're going to hire a helper just so that we can focus on other things. Remember, as I said, with this crop not with the crop not topped we don't want to be driving over this part 
of the field because we will have crop destruction. We can get a good look here at what the post harvest ground texture looks like for our sugar beets. And I'm just gonna let this guy run for a bit and let him fill up. And then we'll demonstrate some other aspects of sugar beet harvesting. So let's take a look at how we use our beet auger wagon. So the harvester has made one pass up, one pass down, and is now making his third pass on the field. I just checked, he's over 50% full. So he will not be able to make another pass up and back before filling up, which would put his pipe on the wrong side of the field. So we're gonna go ahead and unload him now. Now, when we pull up to here, we're gonna notice that he recognizes that we're pulling up and we are offloading just like that. And we should be able to take all of his load. And now we are just emptying out the harvester as he is putting product in. Let's go ahead and turn around. You're gonna want a big harvest or a big tractor for this particular job because of the fact that it is, I mean, we're talking about a lot of weight here. 34,000 liters of sugar beets. So we could, if we wanted to, pipe out on our auger wagon. We have to unfold it with X. And then we have to pipe out with O. And then once we do that, we can, once again, right click left and right to really change the angle here. If we wanted to, we could pull this up and overload directly into our trailer. But what I want to demonstrate here is how they do sugar beets in real life in some places, and that is to pile up the harvest here along the edge of the field. So I'm going to take my auger wagon and I'm going to just pile it up here. I can't do it along the road because we don't own that land. I'm going to just so the beets don't bruise. I'm going to lower that down a bit. And we're going to do an unload here. Control I. And then we're going to basically pile up our sugar beets into a nice to a nice pile. And we're going to come by later with the mouse and we are going to collect our sugar beets. So now we can raise our pipe up and get a nice tall pile working. Just like that. Now we can obviously also with our harvester do the very same thing. We pipe out. We can control I to force unload. Just like that. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the large Grimmy Harvester. Fold this one back up. Let's 
Sometimes I just like to watch these animations. Just like the tiger, we have to unfold this particular harvester. And you'll notice that there are a fair bit of similarities between all of these harvesters. For example, this one also has the ability to all-wheel steer. To turn steering like that crab steering which then really really makes this thing make very very wide turns as you can see and then crab steering right So, they all share very, very similar features. They all look pretty similar. And that is because, well, I think the way I look at it, they're all specialty harvesters for a very specific crop. And over the years of uh, design and refinement, you, know, you kind of land upon a a good design and competitors will copy that and kind of make their own look of the design and everything so here we have the new to farm sim 22 Remy sugar beet harvester and I'm gonna go ahead and just let this thing fill up and we'll come back and talk more about collecting sugar beets off the ground, transporting sugar beets, storing sugar beets, and we'll talk about the sugar factory and making cut sugar beets. And as of course, as I demonstrated earlier, if you want, you could unload directly into a trailer or truck from one of these harvesters by doing a pipe out. And then placing it over the trailer, just like so. But what I wanna demonstrate now is the use of the Ropa mouse in order to collect sugar beets from a heap on the ground into a trailer. So we have a heap of sugar beets that we made earlier. We have our mouse right here. And what we need to do is first we need to unfold this thing and Man, it does some really interesting animations. First off, you see the cab raises and then the seat actually rotates around. The intake unfolds. A large counterweight swings out and then we have the loading belt. So quite a bit of animations going on here. Left click, we can move left and right, and it rotates the loading belt and also rotates the counterweight. Keep everything nice and balanced. Up and down, we'll raise and lower. Right click, left and right, we'll rotate this. 
whole assembly and then up and down is rotating the driver's operating position. So in theory, you can get a nice view of the loading that is going on like that. Now as far as the pickup head, we'll lower it, turn it on, and you'll see that it will now start to collect the material. And we want to make sure we are over the truck, like so. And then we'll say start overloading, I. And now, you see the heap is going down. It is then moving all the product via the belts and conveyors into the trailer and we can basically watch this process. Move it forward. Swing this guy around. Bring this forward. Right, we can swing it back around, make sure we know what we're doing. I'm not dumping on the ground, right? So you kind of get the process and you see how the mouse works. Pretty cool. Now we have a full load of sugar beets. What can we do with those? Well, we can sell our sugar beets straight to market, should we so wish. Here on Elm Creek, there are four sell points that will take our sugar beets. Feed and Grain South, Goldcrest Valley, which is the off-map train sell point, Johnson's Farmer's Market, or the Sugar Mill. Then we also have the ability to process our sugar beets into cut sugar beets. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Cut sugar beets are also accepted at the animal dealer, biogas plant, or the sugar mill. And then, of course, we have taking it to the sugar mill directly as a production point and it will accept sugar beets or cut sugar beets, and it will then make sugar out of those sugar beets. So two units of sugar beet make one unit of sugar. So it's 12,000 cycles per month. So we'll make 12,000 units of sugar per month, and we'll go through 24,000 units of sugar beets per month. Now this is where it gets interesting. If we go to cut sugar beets, our recipe is a bit different. It takes five units of cut sugar beets and makes three units of sugar. It seems to be more effective to make cut sugar beets because we get more sugar out of our cut sugar beets. Which is interesting because all we're doing is chopping up our beets before we send them down to the mill. There are 4,800 cycles per month. So there you go. Kind of an interesting thing that it's two sugar beets to one unit of sugar. But if we cut the sugar beets, it's not two to one anymore because it would be six inputs to three outputs. That would be two to one. Now it's five inputs to three outputs. So we know about how to sell our sugar beets. I mean, pretty simple. We would go to the sell point and dump them off, right? What about storing sugar beets? Well, the base game silos do not accept sugar beets as a storage. So there are really two ways to store sugar beets in the base game. That is, as we shown out here in the field, we store them on the ground. And then you use something like the mouse or a wheel loader or a belt to pick those sugar beets up 
off the ground and put them into a trailer. The other way to store sugar beets is to make use of the train silo that may or may not be on your map. So there are two train silos here on Elm Creek. I believe there are two train silos on Holt Bay of the Rune, as well as Erlengrot, the three base maps that come with Farming Simulator 22. If you're on a mod map, well, it's gonna be up to the mod map author as to if they included a train silo or some other way to store sugar beets. I'm sure at some point in time, there will be a mod that will be available. Maybe there already is a mod available that will allow you to put sugar beets into a traditional silo for storage. But with the base game, that is not an option. But since we need to use a train silo to store our products to sell at the train sell point, then the train silo needs to be able to accept sugar beets because you can sell sugar beets at the train sell point. So we can put our sugar beets in the train station here and store them. Now I didn't really pick the best trailer to do that with because this is a vertical tipping trailer. I thought it was a rear unloading moving floor trailer, but at any rate, you can dump your sugar beets in here and we can get our sugar beets out of the silo. So base game, this is one way you can store your sugar beets. Now let's talk about sugar production at the sugar factory. So I have already placed a sugar factory over here on my kind of test area just across from the shop. And we can simply dump sugar beets into this facility. Around back, we get our dump. We can just dump our sugar beets into the facility just like that. We're not going to dump the whole load. We're going to leave some of this to talk about ways that we can maybe make cut sugar beets. So one way of making cut sugar beets is to tip on the ground some beets and then use the sugar beet bucket that we saw at the start of the video to pick those beets up and process them. We could then dump them directly into a trailer or since we're down here at the sugar beet factory, we could just dump them right into the sugar beet or into the factory's dump point, right? So we come in here with our bucket We can collect our sugar beets up off the ground. Position them here over the dump. And then we can turn on the front loader tool. And you see now we are processing our sugar beets into cut sugar beets. Just like that. Now. Let me show you another little interesting trick. But to do that, we have to turn automatic engine start. We need to turn that off. So if you have automatic engine start turned on, you need to turn it off for this next step. So we've gotten out of our tractor and you'll notice the tractor is still running. That's what we need to happen. I've got a belt here that we're gonna use And we're going to position this belt in such a way that it is going to 
unload directly into these sugar beet buckets. So let me get everything, let me get everything positioned. And welcome to the Glenwood Sugar Mill Sugar Beet Cutting Setup. So I've got our legal sugar beet cutter positioned directly above the dump station. Then I have our SL8022 Quantum Belt set up to unload directly into the bucket. We had to get the Lizard Pickup Belt which is going to pick it up off the ground because I tried but I couldn't dump directly from the trailer into the belt without completely messing things up because of how the door swung. So if we go to tools, belts, we have this belt right here, the SL22 Quantum and the Lizard S710 belt. And that is how we have it set up. We're going to come into here and we're going to turn on the conveyor belt with B. I'm going to make sure the conveyor belt is turned on. That is the SL710. We're then going to dump our sugar beets on the ground with control I. Like that, we're gonna get a nice pile going. We can move it out of the way at this point. hop into this we're going to turn on the conveyor belt everything should be good to go so it should now continue to collect the beats the beats are going up into the bucket and then we're going to turn the bucket on with b and now we are chopping our beats now you'll see we are chopping our beats a little bit faster then how we are loading our beats. So we can just sit here and when we get caught up, we can hit stop our beats so we can load it back up. Let it get pretty full and start cutting our beats again. If we go to the factory, we'll see our cut sugar beet count is going up. At this point, we can activate our sugar beet sugar. We'll activate our sugar beet cut sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting the rest of these sugar beets. And then we'll come back in a month and we'll see how much sugar we have produced. So we went through one month of gameplay since we put sugar into our sugar beets and cut sugar beets into the sugar mill. You can see we now have six pallets of sugar output. And according to the information screen, we have another 20,283 units of sugar being stored in the mill. So let's take a look here at our production. So based on the 12,000 cycles per month and based on the 4,800 cycles per month producing three units of sugar we should have produced 26,400 400 units of sugar over the course of one month well we have 6,000 units out here 20,000 units in the building so there is our 26,000 units i tried to fast forward to about the time frame that i thought we were at when i started the production i think we did pretty darn good at that point. So we can run through 26,400 units of sugar every month if we keep it full of sugar beets and cut sugar beets. At this point, we can sell the sugar for a quite, quite handy profit. Take a look at our prices screen. Remember, sugar beets are selling anywhere between $440 and $400 right now. Cut sugar beets are a little bit higher priced, between $575 and $616. Sh 
sugar, right? Sugar, on the other hand, is selling $1,400 to 1565 I've seen it as high as $1,600 when we've been looking at sugar cane and sugar beets. And we could downline this. We could take this further down the production line into chocolate because chocolate takes sugar and milk to make, you know, sorry, chocolate requires sugar and milk. And you can see the profits we get for a thousand units of chocolate, 6,500. Or we could take it and make cakes out of our sugar. Of course, cakes take a lot more ingredients than just sugar, but you can see the potential profit there for a thousand units of cakes as a result of our sugar. So we can profit lots of ways with sugar beets, either direct sale or excess crop. If we have the sugar beet factory, we can, or the sugar factory, we can make sugar straight from sugar beets, or we can make sugar from sugar beets and from cut sugar beets and boost our production up because with just sugar beets, sorry, with just sugar beets, we're gonna make 12,000 units of sugar a month. We're gonna go through 24,000 units of sugar beets. With cut sugar beets, we're gonna go through and we're gonna make 14,400 units of sugar per month. If we keep the factory full of both sugar beets and cut sugar beets, so if we half, if we, if you will, half of our load is dumped straight in, half of our harvest, sorry, is dumped straight into the sugar mill. The other half of our harvest, we use our fun little belt setup to cut the sugar beets and put them here into the factory. Then we can, in essence, over double our sugar production from 12,000 units of sugar a month to 26,400 units of sugar per month. And then of course, sell our sugar at a nice tidy profit or downline some of this sugar to the dairy for chocolate or downline some of this sugar to the bakery for cake production. Now, as far as our field is concerned, our field is now done. So like traditional crops, Sugar beets are plant once, harvest once. So we have harvested our crop. Now it is up to us to do all of the required field work to get this ready into a plantable field state for the next harvest of sugar beets or whatever other crop we might wanna put in here. If we did move forward another month or so, our sugar beets that we didn't harvest would go into a withered state again unless we top them. If we top them, that should protect our sugar beets from going into a withered state. And at that point, we could probably come through here and harvest the rest of this field as we need it. It looks like it's going to take you approximately seven months from plant to harvest. So you can kind of, if you're playing without seasons you can kind of think about how much sugar can your how much sugar beets and cut sugar beets can your factory process over a seven month period and then try to figure out the maximum number you need to plant in order to keep that factory running if you don't want to have to worry about selling the excess so guys i hope this video was useful and helpful i hope you have a good understanding now of how you can Plant sugar beets, grow sugar beets, harvest them, store them, and then use them post-harvest. If you have any questions, please go ahead and put them down in the comments below. And until next time, happy farming.